Grand Bahama could be poised for an economic turnaround. Good evening, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis. Thanks so much for tuning in. Topping the news tonight, the Prime Minister has announced relief for the Grand Bahama economy with a series of plans to be initiated as early as this weekend, fin finally restoring hotel room availability. It's part of an extensive plan to jumpstart economic activity on that island. The announcements came as a progressive Liberal Party courted Grand Bahamians last night, drawing hundreds of them to the party headquarters following an hour-long motorcade. Keishla Adderley reports. From West End into Freeport, they drove the message home that they support the Progressive Liberal Party. After a miles-long motorcade came the symbolic foreshadowing to the big announcement scheduled for next week when Deputy Party Leader Philip Brave Davis Because I feel so good tonight! Let us ring that bell. Reminded the country of the two days left to register, Saturday and Monday, before the election date is revealed. But when the Prime Minister took to the stage, he made a series of announcements which will likely hold them over until then. I am pleased to announce tonight that yesterday a letter of intent for the sale was signed with a new purchaser which provides for an early closing of the purchase of the hotel. The prospective new owner has bold plans not only to upgrade but bring in well-recognized operators for the three hotels, for the casino, plus additional tour operators and airlift capacity from multiple North American cities. The Minister of Tourism, Yo Obi Obi Obi, will lead a team to Canada on Sunday for heads of agreement negotiations in contemplation of the early completion of the sale. The Reef, Memories, and Grand Bahama Lucayan hotels have been in the doldrums for years. But restoring room offerings and altering long-standing agreements, the Prime Minister says, provides the opportunity to get tourism entrepreneurs back in business. On intensive negotiations, the government and Freeport Harbor Company have reached agreement on what we call a waiver of their exclusive rights to own and operate ports in Grand Bahama. This has been granted years ago by the FNM government. In 1994, they signed an agreement with Hutchison that gave Hutchison the right to control all port development, not just in Freeport, but all through Grand Baham. We have to negotiate to get a better, to get more latitude and a better position for investors, including Bahamians. The government and Carnival, Carnival Cruise Line, have also fully agreed the terms of a heads of agreement for its $200 million cruise port in Grand Bahama. Carnival and Freeport Harbor Company are in the final stages of settling their legal documentation. But the opportunities don't end there. The Prime Minister said, expect the benefits of apprenticeship programs at the Grand Bahama Shipyard to be seen in short order. In the coming years, hundreds more, 600 workers in total will benefit from this. 600 Bahamians will replace 600 foreign workers in that shipyard. This is the kind of public-private partnership we can use as a model to build new opportunities throughout this country. With national elections just weeks away after a campaign the Prime Minister described as a short sprint before he left Grand Bahama, he sought reassurance on one thing. Let me hear you, Grand Bahama. Can I count on Grand Bahama? Grand Bahama, we leave here this evening having commenced our march to victory. We will look the devil in the face and we will say the devil is a liar. We 
are moving forward and we are moving forward together. Keishla Adderley, ZNS Network News. Also at that event, West Grand Bahama and Bimini Member of Parliament, the Honorable Obi Wolskom, used the occasion to defend the government on two controversial issues, contending that critics have been wrong on both scores. They're not saying in this newspaper today, a working paper on the tax administration reforms in the Caribbean found that the Bahamas' bat productivity efficiency even exceeded, listen to this, even exceeded the average states plus OECD member states, European and Asian nations. In other words, all over the world, our value-added tax is considered a model that should be copied by the entire world. But if you listen, if you listen to the FNM, it's the worst thing that can happen. And I heard someone talking about ask them where the money gone and say we teeth it. No, we ain't teeth nothing. What we've been doing is running the Bahamas, making our country better, causing our Bahamas to be great. And IMF says it is the greatest model seen now in the entire world. Why aren't they talking about this? Why aren't they lifting Perry Christie? The same way they said, we don't want carnival. And when you stop carnival, everybody is crying, we want carnival. Meantime, party chairman Bradley Roberts continues to attack the FNM's choice of candidates. He took aim at three candidates in particular, referencing a suspension from practicing law and the Save the Bay saga. Howard Ricky Markey in North Lutra is a bad candidate. And I will drop some more bombshells after he is nominated. Another is the Golden Gate candidate, Michael Augustine Folks, who was suspended in practicing law in the USA and strongly conveys that he is unfit to be a candidate. Now I move to the big one. Michael Pinter. You hear that name, Michael Pinter is another bad and unfit candidate. We can see to Michael Pintard. It is inexplicable, disrespectful, and arrogant that Michael Pintard could pass the fifth list of vetting systems to become a candidate for high office. If Pintard was forced to resign in disgrace from the Senate and as chairman of the FNM, then what makes him suitable for the House of Assembly.